everyone. It's the Drive to School podcast. I am Pastor Goodman at, at Symposia at Fort Wayne, and my good buddy, uh, Pastor Matt Richard, is back again. How's it going, man? Good, 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 good to see you there, Harrison. Yeah, it, I'm, I'm set up outside. It's actually, it's, it's it, for Fort Wayne. Uh, beautiful. Um, it, that means it's completely gray and overcast, but it's like 40 <laughs> degrees. So uh, well, that's life, nice. life is all right. Yeah, how you doing? 40 degrees. Yeah, uh, this, it's actually a little bit of a cold front here. I woke up this morning, it was two. Two, yeah, that's two degrees, and You're so on the right side I, of zero, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's on the positive side. So I mean, man, we've had like twenty-five degrees here the last couple of days, and then went down to two. And I don't know. I think it's supposed to get a little colder here below zero, but uh, yeah, I'd take forty right now. Yeah, see, it's fine till it hurts to breathe when you're outside. That's how you know, like we we done crossed the line. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, uh, whenever we, we get together, we, we try and figure out what Jesus would say about a thing. So, uh, what do you got for us today? Well, you know, we're studying this morning, uh, with a group of pastors getting ready for the sermon this weekend and, and this essence of evil, right? What, what does Jesus say about evil? How do, man, it's just such a problem with evil. How do we, how do we even respond to evil as Christians? And, uh, and I think that's a, that's a huge thing because evil is around us. Uh, yes. it's, in our hearts, this the sinful old Adam that we have, it's in the world and the devil, and so we have evil everywhere. So, so how do we how do we respond to it? what do we what do we acknowledge with with evil and so forth? I think sounds like a good topic. Absolutely, and it's it's one of those things because well, it's hard to look too far without finding some, and well, it. it it leaves us at a place where we, we either feel really angry all the time because it's just easier to feel than pain uh, or hurt. Yeah, I think I think the first thing to think about is is just acknowledging that it exists. And I think many times uh, as human beings, we're afraid of evil. We're afraid of evil. So we we tend to, what do they call that? The ostrich putting its head in the sand, which I don't know if they actually do that. But I mean, you see it in cartoons where, or we just, you know, pull the, the covers up over our head and we just, yeah. we look the other way. We don't acknowledge evil. And I think in a lot of ways that that empowers evil itself, but to look at evil and call the thing what it is. I mean, that's something that we as Lutherans want to really do. We want to live in reality. And that's calling the thing what it is and saying, you know what, this is evil right here. First of all, it's just acknowledging that it exists and acknowledging that evil does do its work and say, this is evil itself right here. And putting the label of evil on evil is, uh, I think, a pretty good step. Yeah, absolutely. And the scriptures are actually help with with uh, having a normal worldview as a Christian. Like you, you can look around and say it, it hurts down here and the Bible agrees a and it'll put a label on it and it'll say it hurts because it's it's sinful. It hurts because it's it's evil. It's set against the things that God would would use for good that that God would would call life to. Yeah. You know, one thing as, as a pastor, one thing I find that a lot of my time uh, in visiting with parishioners of St. Paul's and previous churches I've served in is that when people come in, they're, they're, they're hurt by evil. They're hurt by by either the evil that they've committed themselves that has had uh, terrible ramifications on their neighbor and their situation, or or they've been sinned against by um, uh, sin itself, which is evil. And and part of it is sorting through. And, 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 and again, it's naming it and saying, well, the reason why you're hurting is because you committed this evil act on the basis of what breaking one of the Ten Commandments or uh, somebody has sinned against you and and putting that label and saying, you know what, you're feeling this way and you're struggling and you're feeling this maybe a, a depression or anxiety or fear that that is a result of this very evil. So then number one is naming it and calling it what it is. But then the question is then how do we respond to that evil? What do we what do we do with that evil? I mean, that's that's the bigger question. Right. Um, and, and so, I, I mean, I guess Jesus sort of opening gambit uh, when he starts preaching in his ministry is repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Um, and, and this is this is a wonderful thing for us because, well, when we talk about repent, it's not just be real sad about it, but it, it is contrition and hope. Repentance has these two parts that when we hear God's law, when we're exposed to God's law, it would produce in us contrition. We, we'd have sorrow over the sin and the evil of the world. <laughs> Fort Wayne's great. Um, and when uh, we we hear God's gospel, um, we would uh, we would have hope produced in us because God's kingdom is not far away, but even in the midst of evil, it's close by. Yeah, yeah, and I think yeah, absolutely. That the 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 immediate reaction to evil is to repent, uh, repent of my evil, and then even when we see evil around us. Uh, to be driven to contrition when you see somebody, maybe it's not even affecting you, maybe somebody else treating another person and evil acts going back and forth between them and vengeance has ramped up and I'm 
you can repent and say, God, have mercy. Uh, have yeah. mercy on them and also have mercy on me. And so there's that contrition, that the spirit of contrition. Um, and at the same time, you know, having that spirit of contrition um, over evil, that sorrow for evil, um, at the same time, that doesn't erase evil like that. It doesn't exist. Uh, we are to abhor, Paul says, we are to abhor or uh, hate evil and uh, to always be calling out for what it is that this is evil and we repent. And that repentance is in a lot of ways us saying, you know what, this is evil and, and we're sorrowful for it, that it's happening either by me or to me or others. But then also that uh, Paul talks about this later on in um, Romans uh, chapter 12. He talks about uh, not repaying evil for evil. And that's not uh, uh, taking vengeance in of ourselves. And because uh, ultimately vengeance belongs to the Lord. And so in, in a sense that we're not uh, amping it up by giving into our evil hearts of what amping up our evil to what pay them back to give vengeance. Because then once we do that, once somebody commits evil here, then we what we we ante it up and then just keep on going and it builds and builds and builds until it's completely destroys everything. And so we're not to repay evil uh, for evil, uh, but let let uh, give space for the vengeance of God uh, to work, uh, the wrath of God to work, namely through proper authorities and so forth. And then also uh, to shower goodness upon our enemies. Now, again, showering goodness doesn't mean that we uh, negate the evil, but we acknowledge that there's there's evil here, that they're doing wrong. But then we, we, we do good to them in spite of it, which is the very opposite of what uh, our sinful nature wants to do. And so we we heap on uh, uh, goodness, which is ultimately heaping on uh, burning coals. Yeah, and, and this is the, the the reality that sin will always just beget more sin. And if this is all there is, then you, you can only hope to be the most powerful sinner, uh, which we we had uh, as Herod slaughtered the innocents, which we had as as Caiaphas would would lend our Lord to crucifixion, which we've had through countless atrocity since. But we, we fall back on these promises of Jesus. If the kingdom of God really is at hand, then it's at hand amongst evil. Then when we do good, it's because we actually have hope that evil is already lost, that Christ has already borne my sin and my neighbor's evil sin upon the cross, not so that um, we can we can um, ignore it, not so that we can call evil good, but so that we can call it forgiven. My, my hope yeah. is that when we, we do good to our neighbor, it is in light the fact that Jesus died for for evil people like like me like like you like all and so when we when we act in this world to that the heaping of burning coals on the head uh we we want the the reality to be that christians will be marked by hope by by good that dwells even in an evil world yeah absolutely and and i mean ultimately when it comes down to it um gosh you know to think about evil evil my own heart you know evil for your heart our heart uh that evil is crucified under christ and uh, as we look to the gospel, the hope of Christ, uh, that that evil would be uh, confessed and that contrition would happen and that, that that evil would be continually crucified unto Jesus, knowing that uh, all evil is forgiven in Christ in his bloody hands for us and his nailed mark side for us. And that uh, we are given the goodness of Jesus and that Jesus absorbs that evil of the world, the evil of myself. And he says, it is finished. Uh, you're That'd forgiven. Uh, rest in peace. Uh, be of good cheer, dear son, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And this is a, 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 a this is a liturgy that is echoed throughout a world that is surrounded by evil, that that when good dwells amongst evil, the evil doesn't have to go away. It is it is forgiven. Like our, our goal here is not to then somehow create a society that is is without sin, but to continually take our sins to Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And so it's, yeah, it's, it's, there's no such thing until the great eschaton. I love that word eschaton. It's one of my favorite words. At the very great last day, evil will be ultimately dealt with. But until then, uh, we will deal uh, with this evil in this world. Um, Luther always talks about this evil being what? Like an old man's beard. It, it keeps on growing back or, or, or it's uh, hanging around our neck. And so I have the evil that's in my heart and, and I will bear that till the day I die. But how do I bear it? Um, by confession by contrition, by sorrow, acknowledging it, calling the thing what it is, calling that sin right here, that evil out and saying, yep, this is evil. And then repenting unto Jesus uh, and then being what? Uh, continually absolved in the gospel, um, healed in that gospel of Jesus Christ, the grace of God uh, for me as an evil person, uh, saved by the good one, uh, Jesus. Amen. Pastor, thanks so much for joining us today. Yep. Good to see you, Harrison. Hey, take care.